Good morning, everybody. I'm Kira Nickens, and with me here today we have Mary Jackson and Cindy Roberts. And uh, we're going to talk about, you know, what it's looked like for us during COVID. But before we get started, just a little background. Uh, I have a six-year-old son. Um, my husband and I own a company, a window cleaning company here in town, and we have two Welsh corgis, so that's who's been home with us during this time. <laughs> and we are here in Oro Valley, and I have my husband, and we have our 13-year-old daughter at home, and a 18-year-old son who's just started at the University of Arizona, and we have three fur babies as well. Okay. <laughs> we have three fur babies. <laughs> And I also live here in Oro Valley, Arizona, and I have a 15-year-old son, a wonderful husband, and two great big large fur babies. Woohoo! So I know we talked about quite a few topics last time, but this time um, we wanted to talk a little bit more about just, you know, how we've gotten through, how we've protected our family, you know, what we've done for self-care, and what even the challenges are that we face during this time. So which, which topic do you guys want to start with here? Oh, definitely self-care. Self-care. <laughs> okay. Um, who wants to start? Go right ahead. Oh, man. See, in order to talk about self-care, I feel like I have to talk about challenges. So. Okay. So I guess we'll just get right into it. So during this time um, in early April, so the shutdowns happened, what, late March? Late March, yeah. Like, I feel it like, did. so we went on a camping trip, and by the time we came back from our camping trip, there was lines around Costco. If you guys all remember the lines around Costco. Yeah. So we came back from the camping trip. Before we left, everything was normal. We went for a week. We went for eight days, and by the time we came back, there was lines around Costco, and everything had shut down. So it was kind of a culture shock from us, but for us, but... From what I remember, we got back on March 26th. So that's when I remember the shutdowns really happening. And early April, we had a family tragedy that really shook our world. And for me, what was really challenging during that time is my husband, our company was still up and running. And my husband was still out doing work, so he was gone every day. And so it was me and my son at home by ourselves every day. And that is not what our life normally looks like. And I think the biggest challenge for me was in the midst of such a great challenge in our family, not having the normal outlets of going to church and serving and connecting with friends or doing play dates or even my gym, which was a big one for me. Um, and I feel like a lot of people can echo that sentiment that when the gym shut down, that was really challenging. So anyways, not having all those traditional outlets, not even going into the office to work, um, that was, I think, really hard for me. And I feel like it was, what, mid-April when they started like releasing the restrictions? A little bit, yeah. Um, was it mid-April or was it mid-May? I think it was closer to May. I think it was mid-May that they released it, because I remember it being a full month and a half later. Yeah. So in that six weeks, you guys, I gotta be honest, like there wasn't a lot of self-care. The self-care was getting through the days. And um, I can't even, there's a big part of me that like has blocked that time out because I, <laughs> I, I literally, I, hear you. I don't even really remember how we got through the days. I mean, I was trying to, oh, I do know the one thing that was structured in my life was I was homeschooling three days a week and maintaining that. And then I was working two days a week from home. And I remember that was the structure that I could have. And of course we were live streaming church and plugging into that, but that was the structure we had to our days. And I, I do remember that that was like the one thing we held on to. But outside of that, it was once the restrictions lifted and specifically, I know for me, when I went back to church and started just serving and helping with the live streams and helping getting the services out to the community that for me, it really, like, that was, like, my initial step in care of coming out of that hard time and, you know, getting back into the world. And I remember thinking, it's so funny because nobody really knew that it had happened because we were all so disconnected during that time. Right. Yes. Um, and so nobody really knew that it had happened. And when I came back into the church, I remember feeling so awkward. Like, I don't even know how to talk to people. And we talked about this last time, yeah. but I would go to the grocery it's stores funny. and I didn't want to even look into people's eyes because I felt like I couldn't smile and I couldn't really tell who they were, what they were. Sure. Anyways, it was just a really weird time. But that being said, coming back out into the world, being able to serve again, getting back into the gym, that was what really helped me get through. And then at that point, I believe I got back into the word as well because during that really hard time of challenge, I wasn't in the word as much as I should have been. And then 
through that coming back out again, that's when I got back into the word and was able to start walking again with God. I was, I rebelled a little bit against God in the midst of the tragedy. But that being said, I was able to come back. And I really, I remember actually really like crying out and saying, you know, like, I don't want to be mad at you anymore, God. You know, like, I don't want, I don't want to blame you anymore for this. I know that this is not your, like, this is not of your making kind of, you know, you wish only you're good, good for me. And I want to be back in relationship. Like I want to want you again, if that makes right. sense. Sure. Absolutely. So anyway, so that was my, my big hurdle and roadblock, but then overcoming it. Yes. So. Well, that is a challenge. And I think sitting here today, I think long before we got to September, I think many of us thought this isn't going to be a really long thing. By, by the right. summer, it was no. going to be gone. And, it, you know, mm-hmm. we were already going to be back to normal. And so thinking back of when did everything happen, what time was it? It's, right. it's kind, it, of, a, it's kind of a blur, blur. you know, a bit, a bit. So I know we had in around the April time frame, we had my husband's father move in with us because we were preparing for our, our trip out here, our move to, to Arizona. So he had been hospitalized for a month month and rehab for a month so then it was all the follow-up doctor appointments and you're getting out and you're like oh, we're getting out we're going to a medical place oh my gosh we're going to a place where people might be sick or right. you know so it's yeah. all those kinds of things and of course you're masking up and doing all of that and, and talking about you know what are you doing at home I remember getting up every morning and while everybody was still sleeping I was disinfecting the entire house right. like all the surfaces all the doorknobs all anything that anybody was touching I was you know, doing all that in the morning before they got up so it's like okay that, that's done we go into the day and then you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens from there. And then try to more and more, I'm an early riser anyway. So I tried to make sure I, I got up and had some of that time with the Lord in the morning. Mm-hmm. Cause that was so important to starting that, starting the day and just right. kind of saying, okay, we got another day we're at home. <laughs> you know, I already worked at home. So that was not a big change for me at all because I'm in travel and I'm a program manager and I've been working from home. So no change there, but having my daughter home, right. my son home, and then just figuring out, navigating, how was the end of the school year going to happen? Oh, we had this house being built that, you know, now my husband's back home in Alabama, so nobody's really watching it, and we've built houses before, but you like to be there and see right, things and do. kind of check in every week, right. and, but we did have folks that did go by for us and do that, which was very <laughs> helpful, so um, that, that was great, and so, you know, the, the challenge is, you didn't know what you were going to face day to day. I mean, every everything could be new every day. And now, you know, we're here and my father-in-law, he's out here with us as well. He's doing so much better, just continuing to get better over that time. And he suffered a small stroke. We had things that, mm-hmm. you know, were big things that were made made for some big changes for him. And uh, so, so that kind of changed the, the look of our family a little bit too. But so the now dynamic. we grew by one more. The dynamic was different. Absolutely. Um, and then we had that cross-country move. <laughs> so that was interesting, traveling during COVID and Right. You know, you're going into your convenience stores and different things and just wanting to be, Especially you know. Especially cross country. Cross country, <laughs> yes. And you're in new places different, that you've never been before. And different and, regulations, too, across the street. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, there's no rest the stops. Right. You know? Yes. 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 And on all those <laughs> and points. The dogs. Yes. <laughs> the dogs. And then moving from where we were used to grass to slowly getting less and less and less grass. Well, almost no they grass. don't know what to do. They're like, why have you brought me here? What am I supposed to do? They so, walk on the dirt and they can't even put their feet down. Like, they can't. Oh, they can't. So, and that's some of the beauty of these things that God gives us some humor through these right. things too. So you kind of go, you know what? We'll get this. You know, we had a hamster that we brought too with us across the country. So little Tessie made it too. So it was, it was, it was all good. So today we're in a different place and hopefully we're moving in the right place, the right direction. And, you know, and where we thought we would have already been past this, maybe we will be very soon. So right. that's a great hope. Ah, yes. My story. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> about two and a half weeks before everything shut down and it like just, it, it almost felt like it went from like zero to 60. It mm-hmm. was like everything is normal and then everything is not. My husband went in and had his knee replaced. So I was working and I work really close to my home. Thank God, you know, so I was working and I was constantly going home and helping him and then everything shut down. So then I'm at home constantly with, it takes months and months for a knee to heal. You know, Mm -hmm. he can't barely walk her himself around, you know, with the knee replacement. And then I've got this teenager who's trying to navigate really, I'm not going to say like the internet for the first time, but all of the school stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, all of the changes and everything. So I'm trying to work from home now. I'm trying to help Jess trying to help Jim, I'm taking him to appointments and trying, I mean, and it just, 
the chaos. The mm-hmm. chaos for me was the hardest part um, of anything because I kind of am one of those people that thrive on um, pattern, on consistency, on my norm. And my norm just went, yeah. and it didn't oh, just yes. go, because of COVID. I had like some extenuating circumstances on the other side that I was already trying to like, okay, how do I fit this in? How do I do this? How do I do that? And and then the dogs. The, the dogs were so happy that everybody was home. <laughs> oh, they love true. that. The yes, dogs, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. The <laughs> dogs were so happy that everybody was home. But at the same time, you know, they're barking, you know, and I'm trying to have meetings and I'm trying oh, to yes. do things and the dogs are barking and, and you know... It was just absolute insanity, and I would literally, like the self-care, I would literally get up in the morning, grab my Bible, read a little bit, mm-hmm. hang out, just by myself. Nobody else was awake at right. this time, you know? I would take, like, some time in the morning, and then the day would go, <laughs> again, and at the end of the day, i get Jess in bed, you know, try and keep, I try to keep a little bit of a schedule as much as you can during that time, and... And Jim, you know, off doing his thing, and I would go in, and I would, I swear I almost cried when I ran out of bath bombs, but I would go in, (laughs) I would go in, and I would take a bath, and just kind of try and, you know, relax, and just take that little bit of time for myself Mm -hmm. in the morning and the evening, just to, just to kind of soothe myself and and give myself that moment, you know, Mm -hmm. because I knew I was going to go to bed and then I was going to get up and it was going to be, I can't figure out how to upload this. And do you know where my pain pills are? And (laughs) can you get me this? Can you get me that? You know, try and work. Barking, so much barking. (sighs) You know, that, that was kind of, that was kind of my thing. You know what I mean? It, it was hard. You know, but it it was manageable to a point, you know. I mean, it was totally different, though. I had to try and, like, eke into a new normal and just kind of accept that this is what it is. And then I swear when they shut everything back down and the numbers went back up again, I cried. I was like, I had, like, these delusions of grandeur of, of like, school opening back up mm-hmm. and just going and us going back to work and Jim getting better and just delusions that's what that's what they were to me at that point when it all went back down I was just like that you know and now we're still here Mm -hmm. we're still you know we're getting better we're we're going forward but like at this point in time I'm like eyeing it with skepticism Mm -hmm. you know like I, I don't know if if because I already had that shoe drop I'm just sitting around waiting for the next shoe if that makes any sense at all, I'm just sitting here waiting for the next shoe to drop. So there's still some, you know, self care involved in that. <laughs> yeah. I still, so I still, to do. <laughs> I don't go in and take a bath every night trying to make myself feel better from the day, but I do, you know, do take my times and try and relax or, you know, like in the middle of the day, I'll just go outside on my back patio. I don't care how hot it is, <laughs> and just take a moment. Sit you there, know, just sure. take a moment to myself. You know, sometimes I pray, sometimes I read a book, sometimes, you know, just, but just that lunch hour kind of moment of Afternoons, peace. like after lunch, I, I tend to, I have in the past, <laughs> I'm going to change this for my future, but I get really tired after lunch. And it's actually, it stemmed from when my son was still young, he always took afternoon naps and I'm sure everybody can relate to that. But yes. I remember somebody told me very early on, like when you're, kids are young, take your naps nap when they nap. Them. Exactly, yes. <laughs> because otherwise you're going to be sleep deprived. And so I started napping with him in the afternoons. And so I think my body, as he's like progressed out of naps, so my body's like, wait a second, we're still want that nap. <laughs> <laughs> so my afternoons get down and are like a little bit like more tired and relaxed. And it's what I like to do. And even when my son was home, we, you know what, we'd have our TV time. And I would put, I would go on YouTube and he would sit in front of the TV. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's not the best thing, <laughs> but I needed it. It was like space out. Like, and you know, I actually, one of the things I really liked was that a lot of people on YouTube were telling their stories. And that was really some of the most connection you had because I don't know. I mean, I wasn't calling my friends. I did have certain friends that I was in touch with and everything, but some of the normal people I would be checking in with 
I wasn't checking in with and I didn't know how they were handling it. And so it did help kind of seeing other people. And where we are today, I don't know, I'm not sure if you ladies sense this or not, but in the beginning, I I had some fear. I mean, it was just the news was just every time you heard this and more and more more people were getting it and you just didn't know, can I step out my door? Is it, you know, is it going to happen? Is my family going to get sick? What if I get sick? What happens when we're talking about self-care and Mm -hmm. taking care of our families? And if we don't take care of ourselves, how can we take care of them? And then you're thinking, what if I get, you know, if I get sick? So I know we look at this today differently than we did did back then. Mm -hmm. And those prayers of protection, I remember praying those prayers of protection in Psalm 91 and just, you know, Lord, just, you know, just help us and right. and camp your angels round about us and and just show us the right thing to do you know and to, to help be the best that we could for our families because that was our world I mean that's mm-hmm. that is our world right there and then you're like how can I do this right here and then you know do it right outside too you right. know make sure we're, we're doing all the right things that we need to do so but that I found like the beginning was a bit a bit fearful there was right. definitely some fear involved in the beginning of this just having this unknown virus out there yeah and you know what on top of the virus and on top of everything else you know the mountain caught on fire oh yes. my gosh I yes. totally, that's don't, that's don't right. the mountain and everything on fire. was smoky <laughs> everything was smoky we're like right there on right. the other side of the freeway <laughs> from it and like I have friends who like they had like this ready where like you're in an area where you need to be ready and then right. set which is like pack your car we may tell you to leave at any time and mm-hmm. when they say go you need to get out of your house right. and right. leave right so we're like in the ready stage where we're at my friends are even closer to the base and they're like I have like three or four families that live down in like one of the areas that are right on the other side of the freeway mm-hmm. they're in the set phase they actually get evacuated out of their homes. Oh my goodness. And like we're like sitting here and I'm just standing like literally in my front yard, staring at the mountain, watch it was nighttime, watching the embers fly, you know, and you could just the glow. Right, and all the that glow going. the whole mountain. I I remember I was, looking because we have another we have the other view. But I remember looking and this so this is later. But seeing the whole mountain on fire, being like, this is seriously like ends of time stuff. <laughs> seriously, I was like, <laughs> no kidding. <sighs> so we were getting ready to move here. I forget about that because we moved literally like three days after the fire began when it was just in its early stages. So right. people were already uh-huh. like, hey, you're moving where it's really hot. Now there's wildfires. Where where are you going? It's on know? fire. It's like, right. Where, why are you moving there? <laughs> why are you moving there if it's on fire? Do you think that's a good idea? So I mean, it was. Mm. You know, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we were. I was putting. I was putting like all of my, um, all of my, uh, like scrapbooks and all of my right. picture albums and all this stuff. I'm like pulling them off shelves and casually putting them in boxes and thinking, well, if I put all the stuff by the door, you then know, maybe I'll take it. And say, yeah. And what do I really not want to forget? And you know, I mean, and you're sitting here going, and then where do I go? Because sure. like, do you go stay in a hotel? Do you go to your mom's house? Do you mm-hmm. like, like. Because my mom doesn't live far from me. She's further away from it, but she doesn't live that far. I'm like, does it make it fair? What's going on? It was, no. That's how you I You know felt. what this brings up for me, too, is that during this time, so many people were prepping. Because we didn't know. And I think when you talk about fear during COVID, I think for me, because I was in the middle of my own personal struggles and tragedy and stuff going on, I don't know that the virus itself really had so much of an effect on me. But what did have an effect on me was the prepping and the fact that there was no toilet paper anywhere (laughs) and the lines outside of Costco and that all of a sudden there's toxic meat shortage and all these other things were happening around Mm -hmm. um, the virus. And really, I think it became very realistic, at least the most realistic for me, that there could be a public panic in the midst of the the COVID scenario and what would that look like for our family to walk through that and it's funny in addition to the fires because we weren't at risk of the fire although it was very daunting and like sad Mm -hmm. um but because we were removed from that it what was happening for me was like the whole prepping thing how much do we prep do we prep do we leave food in the markets for other people (laughs) that need it more do we pack healthy do we pack long-term storage do we do you know what i mean like yes. so that was, what yes. was really everybody going on. everybody had those thoughts sure. everybody right. thought those things and and some people went to extremes and some people were a little different like i i had not a couple weeks before had gone to costco and mm-hmm. bought one of the big things to toilet paper before it even, before it even really started and stuff i only have three people in my house like usually i buy like the big thing of toilet paper and it lasts me like a year right? <laughs> you know so i'm like all right i had a year's worth of toilet paper here i'm good you know so and and it's funny the things that you think but i'm like oh 
thank you, Jesus, for telling me to go to Costco. <laughs> and you to go to Costco when I did. I because know. now I don't have to go deal with that thing that's going on in the stores right now, mm -hmm. you know, and I have a freezer in my garage and I keep it pretty well stocked most of the time just because sometimes I can't get to the store when I want to sure, get to the store. Right, sure. exactly. You know, so I felt like I, I mean, that, that was probably, you know, uh, one of the, the highlights when you get to think, I don't have to go to Costco in the middle of all this. I don't have to be one of those people in the line that's rapping literally. They showed it on the news, you know? Oh, yeah. And then wow. you're watching the wow. news and it's just this constant, this is, you know, this is so bad and this is this and this is horrible and, you know, we've got nothing and, you know, and you're just sitting there just staring at the screen going, this is so unreal, so surreal, so mm -hmm. strange. How do I... You know, do I just sit down and start rocking in a corner? <laughs> what do I do now? Take it all up. You know, Take it up on everything. Now? You know, oh. this is absolutely crazy. But, you know, on the bright side, it was super busy. Yes. You know, it was super busy. And I think that that in, that in and of itself was a blessing for my family and for um, our lives in general. Because... We were busy. I was working. I was constantly moving. Jess mm -hmm. was, you know, doing his best with his homework. And, you know, Jim was obviously, it was doctor's appointments because he, you know, sure. he still had to go in for physical therapy, which, you know, was medically necessary after, you know, they did finally shut the physical therapy place down, but he had gotten enough that he was good. Yeah. You know, but we had so much going on and so much stuff that you almost didn't have time to go find that corner and sit down in it and rock. And you I know? think that's actually interesting because some of the people, you know, like my scenario, I was home. So I went from being very active, although still now I've transitioned to work from home more. However, like I went from being very active and very out in the world and then to being at home oh. <laughs> with my son who is very social and also very used to being out in the world. And, but some people had the opposite where either their life got busier or they had to work more. They were taken on overtime or things just really didn't stop at all for them. It was right. like life is normal. And certain people were so grateful for life for them went on as normal. Yes. And other people were like, I wish I had that downtime. And then people right. at home were like, I want to get out in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like. Feast or famine, right? Right. Yes. You don't know. And we had talked about this last time, but one of the greatest parts of this was, I believe, slowing down and really having that opportunity to reevaluate in our life what is important. Are these things that we're holding on to really what makes us happy? Right. God right. calls us to rest. Right. And this has been brought upon us. And, you know, in an unconventional way, yes. but yet it's caused everybody to have some rest and to mm -hmm. think more about that and to slow down and mm -hmm. to have that family time. And so I feel blessed to have been able to do that. I'm in travel. I was busy. My busyness came from canceling <laughs> for virtually right. everything <laughs> that I had scheduled for folks, be it an individual incentive vacation or a meeting or whatever, because that wasn't happening anymore. So that busyness came and now um, it's been a lot slower obviously mm -hmm. and you know the world is it's going to take time for folks to get back to travel and and those kind of things but it, it will come it will come yeah, but okay. it's it's not as busy as it was but it will be again and folks are going to be traveling again yeah yeah i think i think uh like with my son like his birthday was like right after everything shut down like literally like i think our last day in the office and like the day before his birthday they literally i think it was the day before his birthday they announced the everything was shutting down oh, thing gosh. and so birthday only essential businesses yes yeah, yes. Birthday, yes birthday stuff yes. all of his his entire birthday was canceled i mean like and we had had plans to do stuff for him for his birthday right sure. you know so i had you know a, a card and a couple gifts but i didn't get to go get the cake because the cake place had just shut their doors you know i didn't we didn't go out to dinner like we do mm -hmm. i mean basically his first 15th birthday was kind of it was there but there was so much going on it was almost non-existent sure you know I'm saying things like, and your 16th birthday is going to <laughs> choose. What's more than that? That's right. That's right. Your 16th right. birthday is going to super rock because your 15th birthday just blew, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel, you know, I feel really bad about that. I mean, like, I know, you know, 
we usually do something with his grandma. He didn't even get to see his grandma. His grandma didn't even get to give him a gift like she always does. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, we didn't get to see family. We didn't get to see friends. You know, he didn't have any kind of friend thing. You know, it was, like, it was, it like, a, it was like a non-birthday on his birthday. It was so but weird. But I wonder if he'll look back on that with, like, fondness. Do you know what I mean? Just because it was so out of the norm. Right. Those are, tend to be the things that stick out in our minds as, like, I don't know, like that birthday I got to feel really special with my parents. I'm just bringing sure. up, like I wonder right. how he'll look way. back on that, that. Exactly. Or maybe he'll say, you know, I remember my 15th birthday was really tough, but man, it's made me appreciate right. oh, he, yeah. what birthdays yes. look like now. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, think, I think we'll all kind of feel like that when this is kind of, you know, when things kind of calm down and we can get back to like our normal family thing. Yes. Like, don't laugh, but so Top Golf opened back up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Top Golf opened back up, and my son loves to golf, you know? And just that being able, like, they've got the barriers and all that stuff, and just being able to take him and have that, like, little area where we can go and he can just hit balls and, you know, as a family. And, like, that was, the, like, the first thing that we actually did mm -hmm. when things started really, you know, pieces and parts opening back up and just doing that normal thing and yes. something that he really liked to do and laughing and, like ordering food it, it was like that right. moment where you like it almost took you a couple of minutes you got to forget all the stuff that was going on and we were kind of hanging out and doing the family thing and you know and stuff and then like we had a fantastic time and then you know it was like life came crashing back in because we were getting ready to leave and we're putting our masks back on and hand sanitizing so that we can go try and you know make let them know we're ready to leave so that we can make our way out of the building mm -hmm. you know without you know people around and that kind of thing it was yeah it was kind of like time we're all going to remember we're definitely going to remember go it and yeah totally. I mean, you know this is a random question i don't know why I th oh because you said ordering food so how did you guys handle three meals a day at home now <laughs> how did you enjoy that transition <laughs> you know <laughs> Breakfast and lunch are generally the easiest of the two. Those are really simple because right. you've got those kind of grab and go kind of things or the cereals and pop tarts and different things like that for breakfast. But dinner, you know, dinner was something, you know, I could get busy and it's like, oh gosh, you know, wow, it's it's we too late to start something. I gotta run and pick something up. So then, then when that's not really A not so much the option, then it, it, you know, it taught me to be more prepared and to kind of think about that. So I did learn a little bit more of that just to be more prepared because I like that. I like to cook, but if I'm not, if there's nothing there, you always, you, you can do that. Oh, it's too late. You right. Know? So, okay. So it was, pretty, silver it, was pretty, linings. it was pretty easy for me. Good. It was pretty Good easy for, you. for me. My, my son likes to cook. Oh. And, and he's of an age where he better. can. And, you know, his repertoire is small. <laughs> But good. Mac hey. and cheese. So I can tell you, I didn't mind the cooking, but the dishes. Yeah, the dishes. <laughs> I was just, yep, you're, you're right, girl. I'm with you on the dishes thing. Totally. I think what we're going to do, we're going to leave you with that thought. How were your dishes during COVID? <laughs> they were plentiful yes. and many. Plentiful Did and you many. establish a new dish routine? There you go. <laughs> Anyhow, you guys, nice having you again. Yes. Thanks Thank for, you for coming in. Thanks so much. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.